The Honourable Member for Langley Eldergrove. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, last month, I put a question to the uh, Minister of Transport about his unilateral decision to extend the cruise ship ban for another year until February of 2022. Well, the effect of that ban is that no passenger vessels can come into a Canadian port until at least February of 2022. So that ban started with the pandemic, of course, and it killed the cruising industry in Canada, and particularly in my province of British Columbia on the West Coast. It killed it for last year, probably going to kill it completely for this year. And the concern is, what is the ban going to do to the industry next year and going forward? And I think that the uh, answer that I got from the minister was inadequate and missed the point, so I'm happy to have this opportunity to expand on it. Now, the cruise industry is a very important segment of Canada's tourism sector, and for sure it is on the west coast of British Columbia. Now, I said in my intervention last month that every time a cruise ship stops by either in the port of Victoria or Vancouver on its way up to Alaska from Seattle, another million dollars gets pumped into the economy. These are people who drive buses, tour operators, taxi drivers, restaurants, store owners, farmers that grow the food, that provision the ships when they come in. So it's a big, big industry. A lot of people are hurting. Uh, now, the minister in his uh, answer said, well, his major concern was health and safety of Canadians and seeing Canada through the pandemic. And of course, we agree with that. But here's the thing. The Americans are now looking at a way to at least salvage, salvage the second half of the cruise industry in Alaska for this year. They're as frustrated with this minister's unilateral decision as we are, are on our side of the border. They were not consulted at all, and this is, a, this is an international endeavor because cruising is cross-border. Now, the Americans have figured out a way around it. They're going to amend their own legislation, which was designed initially many years ago to protect American jobs, and I don't know if it ever had the effect of doing that, but uh, inadvertently it had a very beneficial um, impact on Canadian tourism in that that American legislation required vessels to stop at a foreign port before stopping at another American port. And that's what kick-started the tourism industry in Canada. Now, I guess we thought maybe that, you know, that, that was sort of a safety check for us, but the Americans have figured out a way around it. This is American legislation. They can amend it. They did amend it. And I told the minister about this three months ago, back in March, that the Americans were contemplating it, and I don't think he took it seriously. The Americans have done it. Both houses of Congress, uh, in an uncharacteristic time of unity, so I have four, four min another minute, yes, um, uh, passed it uni uh, unanimously, and President Biden has now signed it into law, so the Americans will salvage the second part of the cruising season. Now, they figured out they're ahead of us in vaccinating their citizens, of course, but we are catching up. So where is the, we're looking for a more creative solution than just an outright ban. Uh, the, the Americans were telling us that the minister, our minister didn't consult with them. He just went ahead, made this announcement. It's just very frustrating for them. So my question to the minister is, why did he not consult with his American counterparts before coming up with this unilateral decision, knowing how important cooperation is for this industry? And number two, is there any chance that the second half of the cruising season in Alaska, the Alaska cruise season is going to be rescued? And thirdly, what is the plan going forward? Do we know that there is a cruise industry going forward for Canada? Thank you. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the President of the Queen's Privy Council. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. I appreciate uh, the questions, and I'll do my best in terms of providing an answer for my friend. Um, there's a couple things in which I would call into question in terms of their accuracy. Um, and, you know, when the member made, for example, uh, use of the thought that um, uh, the USA's ahead of Canada and on the vaccine front, I might, I might question that. In fact, uh, today, if you take a look at the first dosage, uh, Madam Speaker, you might even yourself be aware of it. Uh, that Canada is actually number one uh, in the G20 countries, and the United States is is one of them. On a per capita basis, on the first dose, uh, Canada is doing better than any other country in, in, in the G20. But anyway, that's not the subject uh, matter. Um, when we think of the 
the cruise and the, the shipping, uh, uh, cruising industry as, as a whole. The government of Canada is very much aware of it and uh, very much uh, uh, sympathetic and wants to do whatever it can to, to protect uh, the longevity of that uh, industry. Um, it's important to, for us to, to realize that you know the, the federal minister responsible does listen to public health officials uh, that go beyond just uh, public health officials here in Canada. There is, in fact, uh, a listening that takes place in regards to uh, provincial uh, public health officials, territorial uh, health officials. Uh, there's consultations that are done uh, with Indigenous and Inuit uh, groups. I'd like to remind my colleague that at present our borders do in fact remain closed and that this also has an impact on those exemptions. Uh, in regards to the cruise ships on the West Coast, while exemptions to the current interim order prohibiting cruise ships are in fact possible, that the granting of any exemptions will only be considered once public health officials have advised us that it is safe to do so, uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, it's not just the, the minister wakes up one morning and says, well, I'm going to do this. There's a great deal of background work, keeping in mind the importance of, of that consultations that are taking, uh, uh, taking place and the feedback that's coming into the department um, and very much concerned in regards to the, as I say, the industry specific. But if you take a look at the tourism industry and the supports that the government has, has provided, Business and tourism, arts and cultural sectors have received an estimated, and this is an estimated, $15.4 billion in federal emergency liquidity support through such programs as the Canada Emergency Wage Subsidy, subsidy Program, the Commercial Rent Subsidy uh, Program, and the lockdown support since uh, the beginning of the pandemic. The government has been there for in a very real and tangible way because we understand how important the industry as a whole, our tourism industry, is to, is to Canada. The amount of, of people that are dependent, we want to be there in that tangible way. So when the time is right, when the healthcare experts, when the provinces and territories um, and, and people uh, are, are on side saying, look, we do need and we, it is safe to do so, we will move forward and we will be in a better position to do that and our statistically our numbers clearly demonstrate that in terms of the the return to work where it's actually uh, taken place in the past in comparisons canada does a very good job we will the honorable uh, member for langley Elderbrook. good well thank you i appreciate the comments from the honorable member uh, and um, so he's saying that Canadians are catching up to Americans on vaccinating their citizens. Good. That's a good news story. But it just goes to support my uh, position that maybe there is room for a more creative solution than just an outright ban for another year. Why isn't the minister talking to his American counterparts to see what they are doing about opening up the cruise industry in a safe and secure and healthy manner? Uh, rapid testing, making sure that passengers have been vaccinated, better protocols on cruise ships, more health facilities, better cleaning. You know, they've gone through all of that and they feel that they are now in a position to do it in a safe and secure manner. Uh, why can't Canada be more creative about finding a solution? Uh, and also, when the, when the member says, well, you know, we're helping financially, supporting them, great, you know, Canadians appreciate that. But what we're looking forward is, uh, for an, is an answer going forward, because this temporary solution that the Americans have come up with could become permanent. Why not? It is American legislation standing in the wrong way. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Well, Madam Speaker, we, we are thinking in terms of the future. If you take a look at the budget 